Okay, so for class today, um, for the first few minutes of class, if you prefer to sit in a chair, feel free to have a chair. Um, and we will be using, I definitely recommend a blanket or a thick towel. We will do some things kneeling today. So if you have sensitive knees or you want a little extra support there, um, have a towel or blanket. Um, definitely we're gonna use our massage ball um, and two blocks. And I think that's it. So let's find a comfortable seat, whatever you've chosen to start, however you've chosen to start. <clears throat> <clears throat> and begin to feel your lower body where how it's being supported so what is under your sits bones right now as you're feeling your lower body you can even use your sense of sight to just look around you just take in your surroundings Feel free to look from side to side and even up and behind you, just looking at the space where you are now. And allow your eyes to settle on something that brings you pleasure, visual pleasure. Something that maybe um, evokes a sense of love or appreciation And then begin to bring your sense of sight uh, closer inward. So maybe now gazing down at the floor with a soft gaze or perhaps closing your eyes if that feels right for you to do so. Drawing the senses inward, it's pratyahara in the yoga tradition. And feeling again the weight of your body maybe a little bit heavier, a little more release. As your hips get a little heavier, allow that heaviness, that sense of release to travel into the spine and the shoulders. And noticing if the shoulders were up close to your ears or being held a certain way and just noticing that and inviting the shoulders to release their burden. Whatever burden that you might be carrying in this moment. And as the shoulders release, allow that softening and letting go to move down through the arms and the hands and through the legs and the feet. Inviting a very small smile at the edges of your lips. A smile of deep gratitude for this moment, for all that is in this moment for you. Knowing that we can hold gratitude in one hand and grief in the other, and we can experience both equally and often at the same time. Bring attention to your breath, and as you breathe in through your nose, let your belly start to expand. Perhaps counting to four or something close to four as you fill up. 
and then softly blowing the air out through your pursed lips and extending that exhale, maybe to a count of six or eight. Counting at the same pace as you inhale and exhale. And just extending the exhale. You can continue this breathing technique or you can drop into a natural rhythm of breath. <clears throat> As I read a poem from Mary Oliver in honor of our Omer journey, we are halfway through the, the 49 days of the Omer as we make our way to receiving wisdom, to revelation, this poem is really perfect for that. One day you finally knew what you had to do and began. Though the voices around you kept shouting their bad advice. Though the whole house began to tremble and you felt the old tug at your ankles. Mend my life, each voice cried. But you didn't stop. You knew what you had to do Though the wind pried with its stiff fingers at the very foundations, though their melancholy was terrible, it was already late, late enough, and a wild night, and the road full of fallen branches and stones. But little by little, as you left their voices behind, the stars began to burn through the sheets of clouds, and there was a new voice which you slowly recognized as your own, that kept you company as you strode deeper and deeper into the world, determined to do the only thing you could do, determined to save the only life you could save. We use our yoga practice as a supportive guide as we be as we to journey within to our own promised land. As we do that, we often stumble upon obstacles, mental and physical, darkness, and also joyful moments and small revelations along the way. So just noting wherever you are on your journey in your own inner wilderness, as you journey into the wilderness of the unknown in the outer world, acknowledge, accept, and bless wherever you are right now. We're gonna start with some movement from the neck down. So you can stay seated uh, wherever you are. If you've gotten tired of sitting on the floor and you wanna to move to a chair, you can do that or vice versa. Let's we'll start to bring some freedom and movement to the neck. So bring the chin toward the chest and just notice what you feel. And then start to roll the right ear toward the right shoulder and pause there. and tilt the chin back ever so slightly. As you have the um, head tilted, you can extend the left arm toward the floor as if you're reaching for the floor or maybe holding a bucket of water. And then start to roll the chin toward the chest again and over to the other side. So the left ear is over the left shoulder. Continue softly breathing into the spaces that feel tight. Tilt your chin back just a little bit. And perhaps reaching the right fingertips away from you.
and rolling the chin toward the chest. Good, and then looking straight ahead. We'll rotate the, um, the head now, so just turning to look over the right shoulder without moving the shoulders, just turning to look to the right and breathe. As you exhale, turn and look over the left shoulder and breathe and back to center. If you're able to do this, it's a little, um, it can be a little challenging to get a grip on your own tissue of the shoulder, but if you wanna give it a try, um, we can take the left hand and reach across to the right shoulder to that little meaty area that feels really good when someone else massages it. And if you can take grip it with even just thumb and um, four the four fingers or even with the palm of your hand and all of your fingers, just find a way to grip that, that tissue and give it a little squeeze. And as you squeeze it, as you keep that squeeze, inhale and look away from that side. So look over to your left on an inhale. And as an exhale, back to center. And do that a few more times, inhaling nice and slow as you hold the muscle in your fingers. If you lose your grip, just re-grip. One more time, inhaling as you look over the left side. Exhaling, back to center, good. And then do some shoulder circles on that side. Just release. Good, take a moment just to pause, feeling where your shoulders rest in space. And then when you're ready, take the right hand and get a grip on the top of those left, it's your trapezius muscles here, the traps. Get a grip on those as best as you can. And then as you inhale, look over the right shoulder and exhale back to center, really slow. Inhaling to look away. Exhaling to return. Do this two more times on your own. Good, you can release your grip if you were doing that with me and then roll that left shoulder into some big circles. And then in your seated position, coming into your cat-cow shapes. So hands are on the knees and start to round the upper and lower back, gazing toward the belly button. <clears throat> Tuck your tailbone. And then on an inhale, come into cow arching the back opening across the chest and collarbones exhaling again rounding inhaling as you open do this a few times just noticing any feelings of limitation and or freedom in the spine Good, come back to center. Let's take the massage ball now and we're just gonna work the front of the chest a little bit. So the ball will be in your left hand. Um, you can also use your fingertips, but we are later gonna do something that is specifically going to use the ball. So keep that in mind. Um, so a ball is in the left hand and then we'll just work the right side of the chest as we make some circles with the right arm. Good, just change hands and move that ball over to the left side of your chest. Good. 
Good. Let's also take the ball just to the center where the sternum is and just roll the ball up and down on either side of the sternum. You can use both hands if you want for more control. So we're just working on these. There's some neurolymphatic points in between the ribs that help to support the immune system. So we're just giving those a little massage. Good. And then go ahead and place the ball off to the side and then bring your arms into a goal post position. So 90 degree angles. And then trying to keep everything else still, we're gonna tilt the forearms down as far as they wanna go and then back up. If there's any pain, back off of the movement or eliminate that movement. Just a few more. Just warming up the shoulders. Good. And then release, shake out the shoulders, release your neck any way that you need to. And we're going to um, come in onto hands and knees. And at this point, if you want to have a blanket under your knees, you can do that. <clears throat> So we're going to take puppy pose. So the puppy pose is like child's pose, except for that we leave the tush in the air and we walk the hands forward. And this is going to get into the underarm area. You can rest your head on your mat or on a block if that's more comfortable for you. But we're really working on opening up the diaphragm area and the space under the armpits. You can have your toes tucked or flat, tops of the feet on the floor. Soften your belly. And notice the front of your rib cage as you breathe in. Can you feel the expansion of your ribs? Is one side more um, free than the other? Are they equal? <clears throat> Slowly walk your hands back underneath you and then press yourself up to hands and knees. So we're in tabletop and then we'll thread the needle. So take your right hand and reach up as far as you want to and then scoop it under your left arm and lay the side of your head on the floor, your mat. Extend your left arm out in front of you. And feel free to explore this pose a little bit. What is it like if you shift your weight toward your right arm or shift your weight to your right knee or keep it centered? Noticing the rotation in the upper spine here, in the mid and upper spine. Go ahead and bring your left hand back underneath you so that you can come back to tabletop. Lift your left arm to the sky to prepare and then exhale and scoop your arm underneath. So now you're rotating, looking over to under the right arm. And now bring your right arm under you. We're coming back to tabletop. Okay, and you can sit back for just to take a look at what's coming next. <clears throat> so we're gonna release the psoas muscles, which are the deep, deep hip flexors, deep inside like the oblique area of our abs. So they attach from the lower back and they wrap around and they come into or they originate in the lower back and they attach to the inner thigh and they do this, they lift your knee. But if they get tight, they also cause a lot of lower back pain. So it can be a sensitive area, it can be very hard to get to. We're gonna do a little bit of release before we stretch them. So you can follow along with me. 
We're going to um, lay on our bellies. I think some of you have done this with me before. We're going to lay on our bellies. With the ball in your right hand, bring it to your frontal hip bone. And then bring it in toward your, like, toward your midline just a little bit. Just right inside that frontal hip bone. And you're just going to lay very slowly. You're going to start to roll your weight onto the ball. And you'll stay in sphinx pose so up here on your forearms. Uh huh. And it might be pretty sensitive, so you are in control here. So if you need to not fully square the hips and just stay on the on the side a little bit, you can do that. So we're gonna start there at the frontal hip bone and just inside of that, maybe an inch or so. You can move the ball a little more uh, inward toward uh, the belly, like the, toward the belly button, toward the midline. And then come back onto your hips here. And you can move, you can rock from side to side if you want. It feels a little, like achy is how the sensation is. If you're in that area, it feels a little achy, which is normal. This will really also help your digestion because we're also, um, we're impacting the bowels right now too, right? So we're just giving actually the large intestine a little massage, but we're trying to get under that and get into that hip flexor. So you can play with moving it around until you find a spot that says, oh, you know what? I think this might be a good spot, even though it feels kind of yucky, <laughs> might be good for me. If this is too much, don't don't worry about it. We're only going to be here another minute or two. You can skip this part if you'd like. Or you can, from a seated position, you can just do a little massage of the abdomen with the ball. Okay. We are going to come off of the ball on this side, and we're going to just switch it over to the other side. Actually, before you do that, though, come into Sphinx Pose. Now you have no ball under you and just rock from side to side and just notice any shift or change from the right side to the left. And then when you're ready, bring that ball over to the left frontal hip bone and inside just a little bit and slowly, slowly place your weight there. So focusing on the exhale is really helpful here. It helps everything to soften and release to the tissue work that we're doing. Play with moving that ball a little bit inward or maybe even down a little bit. Ooh. Couple more breaths here. Okay, go ahead and remove the ball. Come back to your Sphinx pose, noticing how that feels. <clears throat> we're going to slowly, watch out for your lower back here. We're gonna slowly come up, lift through your core, lift your lower back as if someone's helping to lift you up. And you can come into a child's pose briefly, just to release that. And then come on up. Um, if, you ha if you didn't have a towel or a blanket under your knees, uh, you might want one now. We're going to come into some, a kneeling lunge. So you'll want both your blocks. as extensions of your arms and we'll step the 
Let's step the left foot forward first. Now, before we use the blocks, you can have them by your side, but bring your um, left foot and leg into 90 degree angle here. You can tuck your back toes if that helps you with balance. It also helps to get into that hip flexor that we just massaged if you did do that. So you can tuck your toes and then tuck your tailbone underneath you and squeeze your right glute. You're going to squeeze the glute to release the front of the leg. Good, pull your belly in. And then if you would like to, you could reach up with your right arm and then just a little tiny side bend. And then you have your block by your side if you need to use it for any reason, for some balance. Good, and then come back to center. And then you can have both blocks in your hands and then just walk your hands forward, walk your foot forward or help it forward with your hand and just come into a lunge that feels sufficient for you today where you feel a stretch, where it feels like it's a nourishing stretch for you. And for some that might be really deep and for some that might mean that you stay up here or just a little bit of a lunge. Good. Breathe into this really long stretch of the psoas and um, groin area. We're gonna come back, uh, we're gonna walk the blocks back and then keep the leg out in front and just straighten it now, just to get into your hamstrings. So keep the blocks right under your shoulders so that you're not reaching out in front of you. And just start to sit back just a little bit, tilt your pelvis, or your, yeah, your pelvis forward as if you're trying to reach your sits bones back behind you and you'll get right into that hamstring. And you can even move your leg from side to side a little bit, your foot from side to side, that'll get to different areas of your hamstrings. Good. And then go ahead and come find your middle ground here. So come back into your lunge. For me, that means pulling my foot back underneath me a bit so that I have some balance. And if it works for you to reach your arms up overhead, you're taking a kneeling lunge, kind of like a crescent lunge. And then open up your arms into goalpost or cactus arms. Good, inhale here in cactus. Exhale, reach up. Inhale, cactus, and exhale, reach up. Good, bring your hands back down to your blocks. We're gonna change sides. So 90 degree angles first with the front leg, and maybe tucking your, your um, toes underneath you in the back, but definitely scooping your tailbone down and squeezing the left glutes. Squeeze the left glutes. And then once you feel an, a deep stretch in that front of the left leg, maybe you can reach your uh, left arm up and over to the right to get a little more deeply into that hip flexor with creating freedom in the lower back by releasing this constriction in this very big muscle. It's like gatekeeper of your back. And come back to center and then use your blocks to come into a, a deeper lunge of your choice. Make sure that the shoulders are back and down so that you always keep that heart space and chest space open. Opening to this journey in your body in your mind, your heart. And then start to straighten the front leg, lift the toes, walk your locks back with you. As you press your heel a little more into the mat, you'll help to isolate the hamstrings. Reach your toes towards your nose, point them towards your face. And then maybe moving the foot from side to side Keep your breath flowing. Good. 
tilt your pelvis forward so that you can get into the hamstring a little bit more. Good, now we're gonna bring that foot back underneath us a bit so that we can find our crescent, kneeling crescent lunge. Bring the arms up. And then bring the arms into a cactus. Reach those elbows back behind you, open through the heart and take a big breath in. And as you exhale, reach the arms up. Inhale, heart is open. Exhale, reach. And last time, inhale. Pause here. And then go ahead and bring your hands to your blocks. You can take a little child's pose here or just a little cat cow, whatever's gonna help you release your back. And then we're coming off of the knees now. You can remove your blanket and we'll come to stand and have your blocks nearby and definitely a, a, a chair if forward folding causes any lower back uh, tension or pain. So let's really, and also just for balance, right? So <clears throat> I'll use it as an example because we're gonna do a little bit of joint release from the ground up. So first we'll lift the right leg and do some circles with the ankle and you can do that as a balance practice if you'd like or you can have some support if today you just really want that extra support it's okay from day to day we've got different things going on so we're releasing the ankle and then we're going to lift the knee so we're bending at the knee and then we're going to extend and kick back just a little bit so just a little i'm not reaching my foot way up we're kicking furniture. We're gonna reach up the knee and then extend it back. And just do that a few times. The next time your knee comes up, go ahead and bring it out to the side, like as if you're gonna go into a tree pose and then bring it back around. So big circles or little circles, whatever works for you today. Go ahead and reverse your circles. Keep your core pulled in. Good, okay. Let's change sides so right leg is the standing leg. Extend the left leg. Start to do some ankle rotations both directions. You can point and flex the toes. We're using the hip flexor right now quite a bit, holding the weight of the leg out in front. And now bend the knee and then extend the leg behind you. And bend and lift and extend. One more. And then next time you bend it, we're gonna bring it out to the side and around. and change direction. And release, good. Go ahead and inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, take a forward fold, landing on your blocks, the floor, or the seat of a chair, whatever feels the most supportive for you today. Let your head hang and release the weight of your upper body and your knees can be as bent as they need to be. We're gonna pull the belly in, start to look up, start to bring arms out to the sides and up, overhead and to the heart. Good, we're gonna bring the hands overhead again. Big breath and bring the legs together and clasp your hands. You can have your hands in prayer with one thumb crossing over the other thumb and just lean over to one side, pull in the belly in, good, really nice. And exhale to, to activate your core and come back up. Take a breath, exhale over, breathe here, and then exhale up. Good, we're gonna dive forward again. You can open up your legs a little bit, dive forward into your forward fold. 
See if you can get your head to be a little bit heavier. Good, press into both feet as you start to come up with a flat back. Reach your arms out to the sides and up. And hands to your heart. Good. Go ahead and open up your stance a little bit just so we can do some big hip circles. So really working with the joints mindfully this way helps to release stagnant energy. It helps to release stored emotions. Um, change direction. It, it really does energize the body. Good. Okay, we are going to keep our legs wide for wood chopper, which we haven't done in a while. <clears throat> so if you have any uncontrolled blood pressure um, challenges, you want to make the movement really small. And if you have any back problems, like any chronic back stuff, I would say don't come all the way down and then lift yourself up like this because it's not good for your back. So your, your wood chopper will have more of a knee bend and more of a flat back kind of mo motion. Okay, so take care of your back. We're going to have the legs nice and wide. Clasp the hands. Before we do the woodchopper, in terms of this journey, in terms of our own individual journeys through our wilderness to get to our promised land, think of your own individual journey and the things that might be obstacles that might get in your way. And think of the collective journey as we all move, we all try to move toward the promised land. And those things that slow us down or get in our way from receiving wisdom and receiving revelation. And allow your movement to really set the intention of chopping through those things that get in the way, both individually and collectively. Let your ha sound come from your core and not just from your throat. Inhale, reach up. Ha! Make it strong and loud. I will not make it loud because of the mic. Good, very powerful. Let's do two more. Good. Bring your feet under your hips and stand. Notice what you feel. Open your legs out nice and wide. The toes are going to point away from you just a bit. The knees are straight, but they're not locked, so make sure they're not locked. We're going to really expand. We're going to connect to the earth, connect to the mat here for star pose. Feel your legs nice and strong. Feel the energy of your legs is pulling the energy up, connecting to what is beneath you, and then let that energy move through your spine, your heart, and right into your arms as you take this wide star pose with your fingers spread wide, palms shining light, heart shining light. Little by little we leave the limiting voices behind and we let our own star burn through the clouds until there's a new voice a voice that you recognize as your own, your own voice of clarity and wisdom. Let your hands float to your heart. Take a moment to receive your own wisdom. Inhale, reach back into star pose. Feel your own wisdom, your own clarity burning through the clouds, leaving those voices that do not serve you behind. A 
and then bring in that new voice, that voice that is your own authentic, true, wise self. Bring it into your heart. Say yes. You can keep your legs wide, but turn your toes inward. We're going to take a forward fold here so your blocks can be in front of you. And if you would like to use the seat of your chair, you can um, have that here too. So we're going to choose how low we go. We want to have A nice deep stretch in the inner thighs. Let yourself come forward as far as you want. If you're protecting lower back, you can come just halfway down using the seat of a chair. I even like to let my forearms rest on it. We have an option here to open up to a little bit of a twist, but listen to your body. If that isn't what your body wants today, you can just stay in a forward fold. If you are taking a twist, blocks under the hands really help to help create length and uh, flat back, as well as the chair, the seat of the chair. So we'll have the right hand in, um, right in front of our gaze, and the left hand will come to the left hip, and then just start to open toward the left, creating a, more of that rotation in the, upper, in the upper back, opening up the heart. You can leave your hand on your hip or you can bring it up overhead with the palm facing the way it did when we did star pose, so palm faces away from you. Release if you're in the twist with me and take the second side, pull the belly in, keep the belly really engaged as you Move into your twist. One more breath. Return to center. If you're in the twist with me and you want to come a little lower now, you can release completely. And then start to walk your feet in toward each other until it feels stable and you can bring your hands to your hips and come up nice and slow. I'm going to keep the chair nearby. We're moving into tree pose. So that is here if you'd like some extra balance support. <clears throat> Let's stand on the left foot and bring the right foot somewhere inside the leg not on the knee joint, so above or below. And press your foot into your leg and your leg into your foot. Create this um, levity in the pose by tightening up everything together, pulling it in. Think of sap rising. So you're pulling in, pressing everything in, and then you're lifting up through the spine. And then when you're ready, you can have your branches be whatever they're going to be today. So maybe with support, maybe you practice without support. Gaze at something that isn't moving. Find your equanimity, even in the midst of this unknown journey that you are on, this unknown journey of life. And within that big journey, lots of little journeys. Let yourself wave from side to side. Let yourself struggle a little bit and breathe through it. And release. Go ahead and shake that standing leg out. And get ready to switch over to the other side. This time when you ground through that standing leg, I want you to think of grounding into your ancestors, whether they're Jewish or not, you're everyone who is dead is an ancestor and has wisdom and their wisdom has dropped down to us and their revelations are now the reason that we are here. 
So in gratitude, we ground down, recognizing that our roots are our ancestors, that their revelations are the reason that we're here. and that we carry the torch of revelations to come. One more breath. Softly, gently release. Good. You can move your chair off to the side. Maybe at the foot of your uh, mat if you're using it for Shavasana later. We're going to come to the floor. And we're going to um, have, uh, have your blanket nearby, have your blocks nearby. And we're going to come right into a figure four stress, to stretch just to release some of the tension in our hips. So knees are bent, feet are on the floor. <coughs> and then the right ankle comes over the left. A thigh and hold on to the back of that left leg. Check in with your jaw, like how does it feel? Do you need to stretch it, move it, stick your tongue out? Release any tension in the jaw. And release this side move to the other side as you're ready shoulders and scapula slide down your back so that you're you've got space between your ears and your shoulders this side. Um, here you have an option to take a supported bridge or a supported legs up shape. So with your knees bent and feet on the floor, go ahead and scoop your hips up and place the block underneath that sacrum gluteal area in a way that feels comfortable. If it doesn't feel comfortable, don't worry about it. You don't have to do this. <coughs> You could also just use a blanket under your hips if that feels better. You can stay here with the palms up in supported bridge, or you can lift one leg at a time up to the sky. If you have your legs up, start to bend your knees in towards your chest. Place one foot at a time back to the floor. And then remove the block and hug your knees in towards your chest. And we'll take a twist together. So it may be too intense of a twist if you just lay your knees over to the side. Maybe it'll be okay for you, but if you want to release it, too much of the twist, you can scoot your hips over to the right first and place them down and then knees come to the left. So it just takes a little less of a, a torque in the lower back. And you can gaze over the right shoulder. Feel free to use a block between your knees if that helps uh, soften the twist for you.
pull your belly in towards your spine and then start to lift your top knee and the bottom knee. Go ahead and scoot your hips over to the left a few inches and let the knees fall to the right, gazing over the left shoulder. <clears throat> and pull the belly in once again. Bring the knees back to center. See if there's anything else that your body needs before you come into your resting pose, into Shavasana. And just knowing that as you're setting up for this resting pose, that it is the most important pose in yoga. Just like Shabbat is Arguable, arguably the most important holiday. We have this opportunity to rest and integrate. And every journey needs times where we can stop and take a breath and release our bodies and our minds. Now, the journey isn't always just about movement. Often the journey requires stillness.
Let your hands come to your heart and take a breath. Allow your voice, the voice you recognize as your own, to tell you what you need to do. Know that this voice is always present, always here when we slow down to listen. And take your time just letting your body awaken. You might move your fingers and toes, take some deeper breaths. Softly let yourself rise up to a seated position with your hands at your heart in prayer. And we'll close our practice today with our universal blessing. May all beings be happy. May all beings, May all be, beings be healthy. May all beings, May all be, beings be free. May, May all, all beings, beings be